Welcome to the Software Defined Storage Essentials course. This course provides an overview of the storage pillars of a software defined data center and how VMware's Software Defined Storage or SDS strategy helps to mitigate the storage challenges faced by the hardware defined data centers. This course outlines the technical characteristics of Virtual SAN 6.0 and vSphere Virtual Volumes. The course also compares the new software-defined storage functionalities and operating model found in Virtual SAN 6.0 and vSphere Virtual Volumes with that of traditional storage. Click Next to continue. At the end of this course, you will be able to Explain software-defined storage Describe the architecture, technical characteristics, and benefits of Virtual SAN 6.0 Compare the functionalities and performance of Virtual SAN with other traditional storage options. The course covers a wide range of topics in its four modules. Introduction to the Software Defined Data Center. Introduction to VMware Virtual SAN 6.0. Virtual SAN architecture and use cases. Module 1 provides an overview to a SDDC and, in specific, to SDS. Module 2 explains the technical characteristics and benefits of Virtual SAN 6.0 and also compares Virtual SAN 6.0's functionalities and performance with that of traditional storage. Module 3 describes the architecture of Virtual SAN 6.0. Module 4 explains the use cases where different features of the Virtual SAN 6.0 can be used. Welcome to the Introduction to the Software Defined Data Center module. This module provides an overview of a Software Defined Data Center, or SDDC. Software Defined Storage, or SDS, in the VMware SDS model. This module also explains the traditional storage architecture, storage virtualization, and vSphere virtual volumes. Click Next to continue. At the end of this module, you will be able to Describe Software Defined Data Center and its components. List the benefits of Software Defined Data Center. Explain software-defined storage and the VMware SDS model. Explain vSphere virtual volumes, its types and benefits. SDDC uses intelligence and automation to shift the focus of data center management from process to policy through a common computing platform for all applications. This platform is based on highly automated software-defined data center architecture. The architecture includes a common cloud management approach that provides transparent governance of infrastructure and service components, including services that are traditionally outside of the control of IT. SDDC is implemented with a management layer that automates tasks and activities in the compute, storage, and network components. SDDC is incomplete without a management and automation layer that interfaces programmatically with the APIs exposed for the underlying components. By abstracting and bringing resources together with analytics-based operations management, the SDDC architecture results in greater efficiency and agility. The conceptual design of a software-defined enterprise is built on a SDDC. The SDDC includes software-defined storage, compute, and virtualized network components. A common management platform, referred to as the Cloud Management Platform, or CMP, unifies the infrastructure and automates activities with and between the supporting pillars. By abstracting and bringing resources together with analytics-based operations management, the software-defined enterprise architecture results in greater efficiency and agility. The CMP component of the SDDC brings increased agility to a virtual infrastructure. The CMP offers self-service provisioning that is based on policy-driven automation to ensure that users are limited to the scope of their job role.
SDDC is the ideal environment to create, run, and manage applications. It consists of components such as storage, compute, and network that can be built using VMware's suite of products. Click each product to learn more. VMware Virtual SAN is an object-based storage system that provides virtual machine-centric storage and availability services through a Storage Policy-Based Management, or SPBM, platform. Virtual Volumes is a new virtual machine disk management and integration framework that exposes virtual disks as primary unit of data management for storage arrays. This new framework enables array-based operations at the virtual disk level that can be precisely aligned to application boundaries. VMware vSphere is a virtualization platform that provides processor and memory resources to the virtual machines of the virtual SAN. SDDC provides four major benefits when compared to the traditional data centers. They are Efficiency, Agility, Control, Choice. Click each benefit to learn more. SDDC virtualizes the compute, network, and security and storage components of the physical infrastructure, thereby improving their efficiency and agility. As the virtualized infrastructure is not tied to silos of hardware, it can react to the changes in business demands faster. By abstracting and bringing the resources together, and by analytics-based automatic operations management, the SDDC architecture results in reduced operational and capital expenditures. The CMP component of the SDDC offers self-service provisioning across multiple platforms and clouds. This provisioning is based on a policy-driven automation and ensures that your accessibility through the self-service portal is limited to the scope of your job role. This, in turn, increases the agility of a virtual infrastructure. The SDDC delivers increased control and choice. For example, by leveraging a policy-based governance framework, the SDDC provides the correct availability and security for every application or infrastructure service. It also enables the highest levels of application uptime through automated business continuity or disaster recovery features that run across private and public clouds. Virtualization-aware security and compliance across different clouds helps reduce downtime. Operational analytics performed through root cause analysis eliminates the need for time-consuming problem resolution processes. Through the self-service component of the SDDC, you can offer provisioning choices to users. This removes the vendor agnostic hardware dependencies. Users can be allowed to provision or extend virtual machines in private, public, or hybrid cloud infrastructures and on physical machines. This flexibility to span machine types provides the freedom to leverage multiple hardware or software stacks and to deploy applications across physical or virtual machines. You can use the software-defined enterprise solution to deploy any application, on demand and on any platform. The SDDC also extends support to multiple hypervisors and cloud services. Software-defined storage introduces a new approach that enables a more efficient and flexible operational model for storage in virtual environments. VMware's software-defined storage vision and strategy is to drive transformation through the hypervisor, bringing to storage the same operational efficiency that server virtualization brought to compute. As the abstraction between applications and available resources, the hypervisor can balance all IT resources such as compute, memory, storage, and networking that are needed by an application. With server virtualization as the de facto platform to run enterprise applications, VMware is uniquely positioned to deliver software-defined storage utilizing the pervasiveness of this software tier. VMware provides host-level storage virtualization, 
which logically abstracts the physical storage layer from the virtual machines. Virtual machines are encapsulated in sets of files and or objects to store their operating system, program files, and other data that is associated with their activities. The operating system of a physical server directly accesses local or network-based storage devices. Storage devices are statically and individually mapped and configured per host. The operating system of a virtual machine interacts with installed hardware through the hypervisor. The hypervisor provides storage resources dynamically to virtual machines as needed to support the operation of the virtual machines. Using the hypervisor, virtual machines can operate with a degree of independence from the underlying physical hardware. For example, virtual disks can be moved from one type of storage system to another without affecting the functioning of the virtual machine. ESXi supports Fiber Channel, iSCSI, FCOE, and NFS protocols. Regardless of the type of storage device that your host uses, the virtual disk always appears to the virtual machine as a mounted small computer system interface or SCSI device. The virtual disk hides the physical storage layer from the virtual machine's operating system. You can run operating systems that are not certified for specific storage equipment, such as SAN, in the virtual machine. When a virtual machine communicates with its virtual disk stored on a data store, the virtual machine issues SCSI commands. Data stores can exist on various types of physical storage, and therefore, these commands are encapsulated into other forms, depending on the protocol that the ESXi host uses to connect to a storage device. VMware's SDS model shifts the operational model of storage from the bottom-up array-centric approach of existing storage options to a top-down virtual machine-centric model. As a result, storage services are precisely aligned with application requirements. The VMware SDS strategy focuses on a set of VMware initiatives regarding local storage, shared storage, and storage and data services. It is designed to provide storage services and service level agreement or SLA automation through a software layer on the hosts that integrates with and abstracts the underlying hardware. With SDS, virtual machine storage requirements can be dynamically instantiated. There is no need to repurpose logical unit numbers or LUNs or volumes. Virtual machine workloads might change over time, and the underlying storage can be adapted to the workload at any time. The SPBM is a key component for VMware when implementing SDS. Using SPBM and VMware vSphere APIs, the underlying storage technology provides vSphere administrators with an abstracted pool of storage space for virtual machine provisioning. The technology's various capabilities relate to performance, availability, and storage services such as replication. A vSphere administrator can then create a virtual machine storage policy using a subset of the capabilities required by the application running in the virtual machine. At the time of deployment, the vSphere administrator selects the virtual machine storage policy appropriate for the needs of that virtual machine. SPBM pushes the requirements down to the storage layer. Data stores that provide the capabilities included in the virtual machine storage policy are made available for selection. So, based on storage policy requirements, the virtual machine is always instantiated on the appropriate underlying storage. If the virtual machine's workload changes over time, a new policy with updated requirements that reflect the new workload is applied. In a virtualized environment, the virtual disks of a virtual machine are stored on a data store. The data stores are formatted using the Virtual Machine File System, or VMFS. VMFS is a high-performance cluster file system optimized for virtual machines. 
while conventional file systems allow only one server to have read-write access to the same file system at a given time, VMFS leverages shared storage to allow multiple VMware vSphere hosts to read and write to the same storage concurrently. VMFS allows you to seamlessly manage your virtual machine storage by providing adequate storage for virtual machines and planning for future storage needs with minimal administrator effort or intervention. The central shared storage of virtual machines with VMFS also provides more control, flexibility, and performance in managing your virtualized environment. VMFS can be used on a wide variety of block storage devices such as Fiber Channel SANS, iSCSI SANS, Local Storage, FCOE. Network File System, or NFS, is an IP-based file sharing protocol that is used by network-attached storage or NAS systems to allow multiple remote systems to connect to a shared file system. NFS uses file-level data access and the target NAS device controls the storage device. NFS is the only NAS protocol supported by vSphere, which supports NFS version 3 or TCP IP along with simultaneous host access NFS volumes. You cannot initialize or format a NAS target from a remote server. The NAS server is responsible for the file system where the data is stored. The flash read cache infrastructure includes parts such as the virtual flash resource and the flash resource management. All host flash devices can be pooled together as a virtual flash resource. Virtual machines and virtual machine disks can reserve virtual flash resources by specifying the configuration in the VMware vSphere web client. Virtual host flash swap cache, which provided legacy support, for swap to SSD and flash read cache can both be allocated from the same flash resource at the same time. Host swap cache reservations are immediately allocated, but flash read cache reservations are allocated only when the virtual machine powers on. Further, if enough flash resource capacity is not available, the virtual machine fails to power on. The virtual data plane stores data and applies data services such as compression, replication, caching, snapshots, deduplication, and availability. While data services are provided by a physical array or implemented in software, the virtual data plane abstracts the services and presents them to the policy-driven control plane for consumption. The virtual data plane also applies the resultant policy to the objects in the virtual data store. In today's model, the data plane operates on rigid infrastructure-centric constructs such as LUNs or storage volumes. In the VMware SDS model, the data plane is virtualized by abstracting the physical hardware resources and aggregating them into logical pools of capacity. These logical pools of capacity are known as virtual data stores, and they can be flexibly consumed and managed. By making the virtual disk the fundamental unit of management for all storage operations in the virtual data stores, exact combinations of resources and data services can be configured and independently controlled for each virtual machine. The VMware implementation of the virtual data plane is delivered through virtual SAN for x86 hyperconverged storage and vSphere virtual volumes for external storage such as SAN and NAS. In the VMware SDS model, the control plane acts as the bridge between applications and infrastructure, providing standardized management and automation across different tiers of storage. Through SDS, storage classes of service become logical entities that can be completely controlled by software and interpreted through policies. Policy-driven automation simplifies provisioning at scale, enables dynamic control over individual service levels for each virtual machine, and ensures compliance throughout the life cycle of the application.
The policy-driven control plane is programmable through public APIs. The APIs are used to control policies through scripting and cloud automation tools, which in turn enable self-service consumption of storage for application tenants. The VMware implementation of the policy-driven control plane is delivered through SPBM that enables management over external storage such as SAN and NAS through vSphere virtual volumes and over x86 storage through virtual SAN. Virtual Volumes, or VVOLs, is a new virtual machine disk management and integration framework that exposes virtual disks as primary unit of data management for storage arrays. This new framework enables array-based operations at the virtual disk level that can be precisely aligned to application boundaries. Virtual volumes are not pre-provisioned, but created automatically when virtual machine management operations such as virtual machine creation, cloning, and snapshotting are performed. By using different virtual volumes for different virtual machine components, storage policies can be applied and edited to the finest granularity level. For example, a virtual volume that contains a virtual disk can have a broader set of data services and performance levels than the virtual volume for the virtual machine boot disk. Similarly, a snapshot virtual volume can use a different storage tier compared to a current virtual volume. Virtual volumes are broadly classified into five types. They are config vvol, data vvol, mem vvol, swap vvol, other vvol. Click each type to learn more. The config vvol contains vmx, logs, nvram, and log files. The data vvol contains data related to vmdks and delta files. The mem vvol contains data related to the memory snapshots. The swap vvol contains information about swap files that are available in a powered-on virtual machine. The other vvol is a generic type of vvol for vSphere solution-specific objects, such as host-based replication or HBR car file, and content-based read cache or CBRC files. The functionalities provided by virtual volumes are ESX manages the storage array through vSphere APIs for Storage Awareness, or VASA. Arrays are logically partitioned into containers called storage containers. I.O. from ESX to Array is addressed through an access point called Protocol Endpoint, or PE. Data services are handled by the storage array. Storage is managed through policy-based management framework. File system on disk formatting is not required. Storage containers, or SC, are logical abstractions on which vvols are mapped and stored. They are the pools of raw storage capacity, or an aggregation of storage capabilities that a storage system can provide to virtual volumes. A minimum of one SC is available per array and its storage capacity depends on the physical storage capacity. A single SC can be simultaneously accessed through multiple protocol endpoints. Multiple SCs can be created depending on the storage array capacity. SCs can be configured with different capabilities, but SCs cannot go across multiple storage arrays. Now that you have completed this module, you should be able to Describe software-defined data center and its components. List the benefits of software-defined data center. Explain software-defined storage and the VMware SDS model. Explain vSphere virtual volumes, its types, and benefits.